you. Violet, wait! Violet! Violet! I thought you said you could keep up. You're doing this deliberately, aren't you? Am I? It's some sort of test. I take it I failed. Never mind, I'll still marry you, probably. What's that supposed to mean? Cyril, really? It's not something to joke about. What's brought this on? Uh, I don't want to leave you alone. Well, this is a change of tune. What happened to it's only seven months, it's only Coventry? When I get back, they're going to double my salary? Have I convinced you that money doesn't matter at last? Money does matter. I want you to swear you'll be faithful. What? I, I think you heard me. Cyril Morton, this is not the Dark Ages. I mean it. If I thought you'd been looking at another man, I'd... What? What would you do? The Solitary Cyclist by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Dramatised for radio by Bert Cools With Clive Medicine as Sherlock Holmes and Michael Williams as Dr John Watson and featuring Dennis Quilly as Bob Carruthers and Susanna Harker as Violet Smith The Solitary Cyclist I'm sorry to be the bearer of such sad news, Miss Smith. Thank you, Mr Carruthers. But the truth is, my mother and I have had no word from my Uncle Ralph in over 20 years. None of our letters have been answered. I really can't feel his death as a personal loss. Well, that's good. I'd hate to think we'd caused you any grief. That's very kind of you, Mr Woodley. Gentlemen, you've obviously been to a great deal of trouble to find me. Would you please explain what all this is about? Certainly, Miss Smith. Of course. Mr Woodley and I have lived for some years in Johannesburg. We knew your uncle well. He was a friend of ours. A very good friend. It's pleasing to know that he wasn't without friends. We were with him when he died. And it was his last wish that we should find his relations back here in England and see that they were in no want. He remembered us in his will? Um, uh, not exactly. Not exactly? What do you mean, sir? I'm sorry to say that your uncle died in poverty. I don't think the old boy even made a will, did he, Bob? I, I don't believe so, no. Then I don't understand. It's simple. He was poor, but we are rich. Extremely rich. So he left you to us to look after, so to speak. Mr Woodley, neither I nor my mother are in need of charity. Oh, Miss Smith, your uncle was entirely frank with us about your present circumstances. Indeed. And I hope that what I'm going to suggest will be acceptable to you. And what are you going to suggest, Mr Carruthers? I'm a widower, Miss Smith, with a ten-year-old daughter, and I own a fine property in Farnham on the borders of Surrey. Mr Carruthers. <laughs> no, a job. He's offering you a job. Very much better. Is it good enough to play to Papa? Oh, I think so. Good. I like it here. What, in England? Do you? Better than Africa. Africa's horrid. People die there. Oh, Catherine. Is your mother dead too? No, she's not. She lives in London. That's why I go there each weekend, to see her. And your father? No, Catherine, he is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. He died when I was about your age. A long time ago. What was he like? He was rather like your father. He was tall and handsome and kind. He taught me the piano. Sometimes... As a special treat, I used to play for him when he sang. My papa can sing. I didn't know that. He had a 
favourite song? Would you like to hear it? Oh, yes, please. I haven't played it for a long time. You play your piece again, or your father will think I'm not doing my job. <laughs> All right. Catherine? Miss Smith? What is it? I'm so pleased you've come to live here. Home, home, sweet, sweet. was splendid. <laughs> Only your contribution. Mine was a trifle rusty, I'm afraid. You're not doing yourself justice, Mr Carruthers. You have a lovely voice. Oh. It's easy to see where Catherine gets her musical talent. Thank you, Miss Smith. It's no more than the truth. The change in Catherine these last weeks has been remarkable. I can't thank you enough for accepting this position. She's very talented. Talent is useless without a teacher sensitive and caring enough to develop it properly. Thank you, sir. Shall we try another? I should enjoy that. You don't regret coming here, I hope? Why, no, certainly not. Surely I haven't given the impression... No, of course not. Forgive me. I just wanted to be sure that you're happy here. Please don't be concerned, Mr Carruthers. I'm very happy. Have a safe journey. My regards to your mother. Thank you, sir. How far is it to the station, Papa? About six miles, my dear. If I had a bicycle, I could keep Miss Smith company. <laughs> when you're older, I've told you. Oh. It's very kind of you, Catherine, but I love the solitude. The country lanes are so quiet, I enjoy the chance to think. <laughs> what do you think about? Catherine. Oh, all sorts of things. I must go or I'll miss my train. Oh, Miss Smith. Yes, sir? I wish I could have given you more warning, but I'm afraid I only found out myself this morning. Mr Carruthers? It is only for a week. When you get back here on Monday, we shall have a guest. Mm. This is first-class brandy. Well, when Mr Carruthers returns, you can tell him so. I'm sure he'll only be a few moments. He always did have a taste for the best things in life. <laughs> Fancy running off to see the business when he's got you sitting in here. Mr Woodley, please. He's old, that's his trouble. That's no way to talk about your host, No sir. blood in his veins, not like me. <laughs> or you, eh? Mr Woodley. Oh, come on. You don't need to pretend with me. I have absolutely no idea what you mean. I've seen the way you've been looking at me. This is absurd. <laughs> That's a very pretty neck. So smooth. I can give you diamonds. Diamonds like you've never dreamed of. Keep away from me, sir. And dresses, too. The best that money can buy. Let go of me! Not did you say yes. What? I'm asking you to marry me. You're mad! Let go of me! <laughs> what is it? Stop. Stop it! Do you hear me? Ah, oh, Shut up, old man! Ah! Oh. Mr. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite all right, thank you, Miss Smith. Your face is bleeding. Please, don't concern yourself. Woodley, get out of my house and don't come back. Do I make myself clear? Oh, perfectly clear. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Smith. And think about what I said. I don't take no for an answer. Lady one 
Once there lived a maiden, pure and bright, and like the fair. But he wooed and wooed and won her, filled her gentle heart with care. Ah, Miss Smith, good morning. Did you have a pleasant trip down? No, Mr. Carruthers, I did not. What's wrong? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm a little angry, that's all. Angry? Has something happened? Something unpleasant? If that man Woodley has been... No, but this has nothing to do with Mr. Woodley. I haven't seen the least sign of him for weeks, thank goodness. Then what's upset you? I'm not upset. I'm angry. Someone has been following me. Following you? A man on a bicycle, along the road past Charlington Hall. Do you know this man? No, I don't recognise him at all. He's quite old, I think, all hunched up, and he has a full black beard. Do you know anyone like that? No, no, I don't. He doesn't approach me or call out or anything. He just follows me. He's been doing it for three weeks now, every weekend. Oh, why haven't you mentioned this before? That's a very lonely stretch of road. I don't think I'm in any danger. I'm not at all sure you're correct. It's just... It's a violation of my privacy. What right is he? I'm very pleased you told me. I shall do something about it. That's very kind of you, Mr Carruthers. But I'm perfectly capable of doing something about it myself. My dear Miss Smith, I'm extremely busy at present. Mr Holmes, I am in need of your help. I'm engaged in a case of the utmost importance. It requires my undivided attention. All I ask is that you hear my story and give your advice. Well, I'm sorry, but it's quite impossible. Fifteen minutes of your time. Ten. Uh, go to a local police station. And talk to some unimaginative village constable who wouldn't know something bizarre if it bit him in the leg. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm truly sorry. Uh, uh, what? Um, please try to understand, Miss Smith. Mr. Holmes is working on a very abstruse and complicated problem. Any distraction could be damaging. Dr. Watson, doesn't Mr. Holmes know that stepping back temporarily from a problem often enables one to see it with new clarity? Yes, I'm sorry. But the most uh, interesting what... theory. I'm glad you think so. And not one in which I have a great deal of faith. Even a small amount of faith can sometimes work miracles, so we're told. Uh, Miss Smith, if you've come to me for miracles... Mr Holmes, I have come to you for advice, and no more. And also no less, it seems. Oh, very well. Give me the facts. Thank you, sir. Well... Well, at least it can't be your health. So ardent a bicyclist must be full of energy. How in the world did you... Ah, you can tell from my shoes. Oh. Quite right, Miss Smith. The roughening at the side of the sole. Where the pedals rub. Yes, I bicycle a good deal. Your hand, please. Mr Holmes? It is my business. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, I thought for a moment that your profession was typewriting, but of course, no, no, it's obviously music. These um, spatulate finger ends are common to both. Indeed. Hmm. Your face... Yes, there's a spirituality about the face which the typewriter does not generate. Oh, yes, Watson, this lady is a musician. Yes, Mr Holmes, I teach music. Yes, in the country, from your complexion. Near Farnham. Yeah. Oh, the Surrey border. That's a beautiful neighbourhood. Hmm. And, and full of the most interesting associations. It was near there that we arrested Archie Stamford, the forger. You remember, Watson? Yes, I do. So... Miss Violet Smith, what exactly has happened to you near Farnham on the borders of Surrey? Then he heeded not her weeping, nor cared he her life to save. Soon she perished, now she's sleeping in the cold. And silent grave. This morning, as I cycled to Farnham Station, he was there again. So I laid a trap for him. Good for you. The road is mostly straight, but there's one sharp bend. I pedalled round it very fast, then stopped. 
I expected him to shoot past me before he realised that I was waiting for and him. you'd have had your first close view of his face. Exactly. Mm, but that didn't happen. No, it didn't. He never appeared. He guessed your plan. He was waiting on his side of the bend. That's exactly what I thought. So I went back and looked. I could see a mile of road, but he wasn't on it. He disappeared into thin air. How long did you wait before looking? Not more than a minute. Could he have gone down a side road? There aren't any. Hmm? A footpath? No, Mr Holmes. One side of the road is open heath, and the other is the hedge surrounding Charlington Hall. There was nowhere he could have gone. Describe this hedge. Well... It's very old and dense. A yew hedge, I think. Yew. Where is the entrance to the hall grounds? It's in that road, but a long way further back. He certainly didn't have time to reach it. Did your employer take any action, as he promised? He ordered a horse and trap and a groom to drive me. But this morning you bicycled again. For some reason the trap wasn't delivered. It's not coming till next week. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, apart from this unwanted attention and the incident with Mr Woodley, has anything else happened to disturb your life in Farnham? Oh, no, Mr Holmes. It's been quite idyllic. Ah, well, I'm delighted to hear it. <laughs> what is the household? Just one other. Mrs Dixon, the housekeeper. Ah. Yes. Uh, where is your fiancé? In Coventry, until the autumn. Hmm. Have you told him of this newfound happiness? I've informed him of my new position. Yes, of course. Hmm. He wouldn't pay you a surprise visit. Mr Holmes, as if I shouldn't know him. A full black beard can conceal a good deal. Have you had any other admirers? Several, before I knew Cyril. Hmm. Since? Well, there was this dreadful man, Woodley, if you can call him an admirer. No one else? Well, uh, Who is he? Well, my employer, Mr Carruthers, he, he takes a good deal of interest in me. Ah. We are rather thrown together. Yes, of course. I must ask if this um, interest is reciprocated. Mr Holmes, I'm engaged to be married. Well, quite so, but this Mr Carruthers is both attentive and considerate, and your life in his household has been idyllic. Sir, my feelings towards Mr Carruthers are not those of a woman to a prospective husband. I hope that is clear. Abundantly. Thank you. Miss Smith, you told us that you live with your mother. That's correct. Your father is dead? When I was nine years old. Ah. He was James Smith. He conducted the orchestra at the old Imperial Theatre. Hence, of course, the great love for music. Now, as I said, Miss Smith, I am... Uh, very busy just now. I see. Yeah, but I will find time to make some inquiries into the case. Uh, you will let me know of any fresh developments. Oh, certainly. Thank you, Mr Holmes. Mm. Take no step without letting me know. Hmm? Goodbye. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'm sure that all will be well. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh. It is part of the settled order of nature that such a girl should have followers, but preferably not on bicycles in lonely country roads. Mm. You think this is a serious matter? Well, don't you? Well, it's not exactly unheard of for a man to follow a handsome woman, and if he's too scared even to get closer. The whole thing seems more grotesque than dangerous. Uh, There are curious details. Why does he only appear at that one point on the road? What's Mm. the connection between Carruthers and the odious Woodley? And you recall the salary Carruthers pays, Miss Smith. Yes, a hundred a year. It's double the market price. As she said, a rich man. But with no carriages or horses. Even though he's six miles from the station, that's a bit odd. The whole thing is odd. Very odd. How did this bearded man disappear into thin air? He didn't. But Miss Smith's description... If he didn't stay on the road and he didn't go out onto the open heath, what remains? Hmm, grounds of, what was it, Charlington Hall? But the hedge... Evidently not as unbroken as our client imagines. Well, we shall find out on Monday morning. Hmm. You're going down there? No, you are. Soon she perished, now she's sleeping In the cold and silent grave You really have done remarkably badly. Badly? 
I thought it was a splendid day's work. What have we gained? I saw the man follow Miss Smith. So we know that her story is true. I never doubted it. I saw him flee when she challenged him directly. She's a highly spirited girl, and he always keeps his distance. Hardly new information. I watched him return and go into the grounds of Charlington Hall, straight up the main drive. We already knew there was a connection. And I have the name of the man who's renting the hall for the summer. Williamson. An elderly, respectable gentleman. And that's all you managed to find out about him? Who's the better for that? I send you for information, and you go to a house agents. Oh, you couldn't have come up against a, a more effective wall of professional silence if you'd gone to a lawyer or a doctor. This is ridiculous. What should I have done, for God's Hidden sake? Hidden in the hedge, not on the heath. Oh. You'd have been close enough to see his face and then visited the nearest public house. That's the centre of country gossip. Oh, they would have given you the name of everyone at the hall from the master to the scullery maid. Oh, remarkably badly. First that from the soul doth rise, doth ask a drink divine. But might I of Jove's nectar sup, I would not change for Thank you, Miss Smith. That was beautifully played. I love accompanying songs. Two separate elements that make a greater whole. You're very perceptive. Miss Smith. Yes, Mr. Carruthers? I have something... To... Miss Smith, would you do me the great honour of becoming my wife? Mr. Carruthers... I... I believe you know how I feel towards you. Yes, I do. Uh, dare I hope that you return those feelings? Sir, my promise is already given. You know that. Engagements can be broken. Affections can change. Miss Smith, Violet, promise me at least that you'll consider my proposal. It would be wrong of me to give you that promise. I'm so sorry. I must say no. Ah, look at this. From Miss Smith. Hmm? Mm, he's appeared again. I've already told you that. I was watching, you may remember. Even if it was from the wrong place. Look at the postscript. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. You can understand that, that the situation is a little strained. Yeah, I say that's probably something of an understatement. Yeah, she certainly seems to be getting into deep waters. Mm. This has nothing to do with the case, though, surely? No. Hmm. I shall be back this evening. Mm. Where are you going? I feel like a quiet, peaceful day in the country. Oh. Oh. All right, that's it. I've had enough of you, Woodley. Mr. Woodley to the likes of you. I think not. No gentleman strikes with the back of his hand. Are you, are you all right, sir? Yes. I perfectly thank you, landlord. Uh, would you like me to call a constable? Thank you. I believe I can cope by myself. Who are you? You didn't know I was back there, did you? I heard you. What do you mean, asking all these bloody questions? Uh, no gentleman uses such language in a respectable house. If your hearing's that good, you'll have heard that you're not welcome here. I'll show you who's not welcome. No! <laughs> See, Woodley, you're nothing but a ruffian. You cocksaw bastard! <laughs> a gentleman <laughs> learns his <laughs> lessons. Stand still and take it like a bloody man! <laughs> I've told you once about that <laughs> language. <laughs> oh, 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 I'll rip you apart <laughs> with my bare hands, you <laughs> A gentleman uses his fist. <laughs> Barney, fetch the cart. Let's get rid of this mess. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Keep still. 
Uh, it was delicious, Watson. Delicious. Mm -hmm. I get so little exercise. It's always a treat. <laughs> it's a good job you've kept up the boxing. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Ah, thank you. Well, it seems I owe you an apology. What on earth for? Well, however enjoyable it may have been, my day on the Surrey border hasn't been much more profitable than your own. Oh, I don't know about that. You found out that this Williamson's a clergyman. Yes, and most of the landlord's other comments painted him as distinctly unecclesiastical. There's been some right goings on at the hall, sir. Some of his visitors had a warm lot, sir. A very warm lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially your friend Woodley. Mm, I didn't think he'd be far away. Mm. There's a link between Woodley and Carruthers that lies at the heart of all this. Yes. Sooner or later, it'll come to light. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Old man, Listen, are you blind as well as bloody stupid. Keep your voice down, you idiot. Careful, I'm not in a very tolerant mood. Read this. Is that horrible man? I thought he'd gone away for good. Yes, so did I. Listen. This changes everything. Well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing, I suppose. It's up to me now. You keep away from her. Do you hear me? Keep away from her. I don't want her hurt. <sighs> Listen, hmm? you will not be surprised to hear that I am leaving Mr Carruthers' employment. On Saturday, I come up to town and do not intend to return. What's happened? Yeah, Woodley's shown up at Carruthers' house, shouting oaths and swinging his fists. Yes, he looks more awful than ever now, for he appears to have met with an accident. <laughs> Here. Hmm. Thank you. I loathe and fear him more than I can say. Hmm. Woodley and Carruthers. What is the link between them, do you suppose? Hmm. Business partners or some such? Two such different men. Hmm. And where does the late Ralph Smith fit into the picture? Goodness knows. Hmm. At least our client has someone on the spot to protect her. We can rest easy. Can we? Hmm, surely we can. It's only for two days. All my troubles will be over by Saturday. So I trust, Watson. So I trust. I would shield thee from all danger, save thee from the tempter's snare. Lady, shun that dark-eyed stranger. I have warned thee, now beware. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hmm? In a couple of hours, she will have turned her back on the whole business forever. Relax. <sighs> Get your hat and coat. What? And your revolver. From the top of this rise, we'll be able to see Charlington Hall. Uh, this road's too up and down for my liking. There's too many hidden stretches. Uh, there's only one more dip after this hill. Then it evens out. Uh, and this is a splendid vantage point. Uh, you can see for miles. Mm, the bend in the road, the long stretch of hedge, and then the entrance to the hall. Uh, our client described it very well. She's a good eye. That's high praise coming from you, <laughs> particularly for a woman. Mm, I've given her a margin of half an hour. What exactly do you plan to do? I'll simply be there as she passes the gates of the hall. Are you going to confront this bearded cyclist? Well, that depends entirely on what happens. What do you expect to happen? I have absolutely no idea. Yeah. We'd better get walking if you want to be at the hall before Miss Smith. <sighs> Holmes? Look at Watson. Where? A horse and trap. The field glasses, quickly. Oh, damn. What is it? That trap has a bicycle slung on the back. It's her. Already? She must be taking an earlier train. Fool! I should have allowed for that. Come on! Oh, damn this rope. I can't see the trap. It's only... 
for a moment. Yeah, here it comes, us. And nobody on it. But too late. It's abduction and heaven knows what else. Wait here. For God's sake, be careful. Holmes! Oh, Stop it, Watson! We need it! Whoa, man! Whoa! Oh, that's it. That's the way. Ah, easy, easy. Ah, good man. Well done. Now, quickly. Turn it round. Right. Come on, boy. Here we go. Oh, that's it. Are you hurt? No, no. Nothing that matters. They must have been hiding by the gates of the hall. Now, okay. oh, good. Now, come on. Back to the gates. Let's see if I can repair the consequences of my own blundering. Uh, on there! On! I can't have gone far with her. When we get to the gates, we'll have a clear view right up to the hall. We should be able to see them. Uh, here we are! Hold on for the turn! Whoa! Where the devil have they gone? They must be inside already. Get down! <laughs> what? Well, have they got an armed guard on the place? No, no. That shot came from behind us. Look! Good God, it's him! The solitary cyclist. Stay down! <laughs> He can't miss from that range. Hold! Don't shoot! We're as concerned for her as you are! God's sake, Carruthers! Carruthers? Where did you get that trap? Tell me. We found it on the road. There was no one in it. Then they've got that hellhound Woodley and the blackguard parson. What's the meaning of all this, Carruthers? Come with me! Wait! There's no time! Wait, I say! There's no point in rushing off just anywhere. What do you mean, man? They'll have taken her to the hall. No! There! They went that way! Uh, how can he know? Who are you? We are friends. For God's sake, man, trust us. Come on! Say it. For pity's sake, hurry. I tell you that with a gunshot. Shut up, you drunken old fool. Say it. Say it. Ah, oh, you little bitch! Through here! Wait! Stop! What's the matter? There's no time! Watson! Look here! It's Peter, my groom. He was driving the trap. Uh, have they killed him? No. He's still alive. Or does he need immediate help? I, uh, I don't think so, no. Uh, then let him lie. Oh. That's this way! I must have the proper response. You'll have it. <coughs> Say it. I do. I pronounce that you be man and wife together. What God hath joined, let no man put asunder. Now, for the love of heaven, let's get out of here. Release that woman! Oh. Oh. What the hell are you doing here? Who are your friends? Don't you know me, Woodley? Mr. Carruthers! Oh. Ah, going to a fancy dress ball, are you, Bob? Well, the beard suits you. I told you what I'd do if you molested her. I'll see that woman righted if I have to swing for it. You're too late, Carruthers. She's my wife. No. She's your widow. Oh. You fool! Violet. Oh, Violet. You bloody murderer. Shut up, or the next one's yours. Enough of this. Carruthers, give me that pistol. Give it to me. Here. Yeah. That's better. We will have no more violence. Do not turn so coldly from me. I would only guard thy youth From his stern and withering power I would only tell the truth Miss Smith is resting. Her injuries are only superficial. <sighs> Thank the Lord. If he'd hurt her... And Woodley will live. Then I'll go and finish the job. You'll stay exactly where you are. 
Are you telling me that that girl, that angel, is tied to roaring Jack Woodley for life? You needn't concern yourself about that. I made some inquiries about his reverence here. He has no right to solemnise a marriage. I have been ordained... And also unfrocked. Once a clergyman, always a clergyman. I think not. In any case, a forced marriage is no marriage, but it is a very serious felony, as you'll discover. How much did Woodley hire you for, Williamson? I doubt if it'll recompense you for the jail sentence. I'm saying no more. Very wise of you. As for you, Carruthers, you'd have done better to keep your pistol in your pocket. Perhaps. But it would be mad to think that that girl was in the power of the greatest bully in South Africa. Yes, Miss Smith told us how you threw him out of the house the first time he molested her. Yes. He knocked me down. I'm even with him on that score, anyhow. Then I found out he'd picked up with this outcast parson. Yeah. They set up housekeeping here at the hall, right on her road to the station. I kept a close eye on her after that. And them. But why all the deception? Why the disguise? Why didn't you just tell her she was in danger? Because then she would have left me, and I couldn't have borne that. I love that girl. And even if she couldn't love me, I wanted her in the house. I wanted to see her, hear her voice. You call that love, sir? I call it selfishness. Perhaps the two go together. Anyway, I had to protect her. I knew they were about to make a move. How did you know? Woodley brought me this two days ago. Here. The old man is dead. Of course. Ralph Smith. Miss Smith's uncle? But he died months ago. I don't think so. I think that when Woodley and Carruthers left South Africa, Smith was still alive. Alive but fatally ill. Isn't that so, Carruthers? How do you know that? Because this key has unlocked the whole puzzle. That her uncle was dead wasn't the only lie you told Miss Smith, was it? He was alive and he was rich. Extremely rich. Unlike you and Woodley, for all your claims. Well... <sighs> You seem to know it all. I know that only two servants and no carriages is not the household of a wealthy man. I deduce that you found out that Ralph Smith's niece was his next of kin and you came over here and cold-bloodedly hunted her down. Do you mean to say that this whole business was so that they could get their hands on Miss Smith's inheritance? It was Woodley's plan. And God help me, he persuaded me to be a part of it. It's no sort of excuse, gentlemen, but the picture he painted... The money. One of them was to marry her and the other to have a share of the plunder. Why did Woodley propose to her first, Carruthers? Why not you? We... We played cards for her. He won. How dare you? Oh. <laughs> Miss Smith, you should be resting. How dare you, sir? Well, Miss Smith, how much did you hear? Mr Holmes... Is Mr. Carruthers going to jail? It's not for me to prejudge the trial. Yes, I think it very likely. What will happen to Catherine, the little girl? Uh, the court will make some sort of arrangement. Some sort of arrangement? How could you do it? To her? To your own daughter? How could you do it to me? Greed is a terrible thing, but... Miss Smith, it's like a disease. It eats away at you, changes you completely. I haven't always been the man you see now. I beg you to believe me. I would have been worthy of you once. You beg me to believe you. Every single thing you've told me has been a lie. Except one. I do love you. Did you... Truly feel nothing for me at all? I was so happy. I don't think I'd ever been so happy. Not since my father was... How could you make someone so happy and then just snatch it all away? I wish to God I'd never set eyes on you.
The Solitary Cyclist, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Madison and Dr. Watson by Michael Williams, with Dennis Quilly as Carruthers and Susanna Harker as Violet Smith. Woodley was played by David Holt, Williamson by Peter Penry Jones, Catherine by Cyril Jenkins, and Cyril by John Webb. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The pianist was Michael Haslam, and the violinist was Leonard Friedman. The Solitary Cyclist was dramatised for radio by Bert Cools and directed by Patrick Rayner. <laughs>